So Jack, what are you working on now? Well, one of the important initiatives that we've been working on in the company is, is what we call TV in Context. Uh, TV in Context is a process which everyone's familiar with, which is the context in which an ad appears and makes a difference. Uh, so for example, if somebody goes into a wine store and French music is playing, it actually has been observed to be true that people are more likely to buy French wines. And if they're listening to Italian music, they're more likely to buy Italian wine. So the idea is, is uh, based on psychological principles which are well known and well documented, that subtle cues create, uh, uh, you know, prime certain thought processes that can help, uh, can help messages grow. And so, for example, you know, we've shown examples and demonstrated repeatedly, both with standard advertising metrics like recall, but more importantly, and you know, not in terms of retention measures, because that's not what it's about. It's a cognitive process. It makes ads more effective to put a commercial about an allergy relief medication after somebody has been on a, in a movie show having an allergic reaction. So we did that with a, a Will Smith movie, I think it was called Fletch. And and the impact of the ad was substantially stronger after they see that. Or we've shown uh, examples of OnStar, which is a product that, that GM offers. And you'll place that ad in a scene close to a car accident, or you'll show that ad in a normal, in a normal scene in another place of the movie, earlier in the movie, before the car accident, where it's not been primed. And you find that OnStar as a product is seen as more valuable, the ad has more impact, it's more emotionally engaging physically, both in terms of eye gaze, blood pressure, heart rate, palm or sweat, all the indications you have of emotional involvement are raised when an ad is put in the right context. We've always known this in print. We've done it in print. We've done it online. But nobody has really thought about doing it in a concerted and systematic fashion for TV. And we've begun to do that now for movies, and we're doing it for series. Does that work predominantly in the A position or the B position, or do you find it through the pod? It, it works through the pod. Normally we offer it in an A position, but the research that we've done shows that it works beyond the A position. You know, the effect of priming, you know, it depends on how strong that primed impression is. If somebody, if there's a scene that's very strong and powerful, that effect can last for months and can affect other ads that, that resonate with the concept that came up. The, the second issue we're working on is TV everywhere. We're trying to figure out authentication. We're trying to figure out models of what the screen should look like. And we also want to make sure that the measurement is in place, works for our businesses, so it is a win-win because it works for cable operators. They, are, they keep subscribers by offering them the content they've already paid for on a new platform. It works for us because we get added impressions. It works for the advertiser because they get added impressions. But most importantly, it works for the consumer because they get to see, they get, they're already paying for the content. Now they get to see it in a, in a more convenient way on multiple. So it sounds to me like it's a really strong idea. Nielsen's got a measurement system that makes sense for it, and it makes a lot more sense to do that than to go over the affiliates in terms of cable affiliates or going around the backs of broadcast networks, because I used to be in broadcast. Why should I go around the affiliates and put my shows up on a website when they don't get to participate? This is a winning solution for all the parties involved. It's, I think, really smart for us to, to collaborate together to find a way to make this happen.